Well, howdy YouTube, Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today, we're going to revisit our Linux Mint desktop, and we're going to see how it's doing. Uh, any problems I'm having, uh, things I like about it, things I don't like about it, am I going to switch back to Windows, uh, what's my current situation. So anyway, without further ado, let's get the video underway. So I will say, before I show you some screenshots of how I've got my desktop set up, that uh, I have had, uh, I've had a few issues. I had some uh, audio issues uh, with Linux Mint, uh, and I think they were related to YouTube. I was getting some scrambled audio, or I mean, to Google Chrome. So I shut down Google Chrome, brought it back up, and all seemed to be well. Uh, but you're going to see as the video progresses along here what I've decided to use software-wise on my Linux Mint desktop to get the work done that I need to get done. Now, it's not to say I'm not still using Windows on this PC. As you know, I've set it up to dual boot between Windows 10 and Linux Mint 19. Uh, and um, I do that because the video editing program that I use is Windows-based. It's Adobe Premiere Elements is what I use to edit. And I just haven't trained myself again, haven't spent the time to train myself to use Caden Live. But I'll be getting there eventually. Uh, but let's go over uh, uh, some of the software I'm using on my Linux Mint desktop. So here's the left screen of my desktop environment. And as you can see, I've got a Doctor Who uh, background on here. I've got my scratch drive and my work drive. This is my SSD drive that I edit all my videos on. And this is a work drive. It's a spinning one terabyte. Uh, down here, I've got my icons. I've got Firefox, which I... Uh, what's really odd is I'm using a mix of Google. I use Google Chrome specifically for YouTube. And then I use Firefox as my browser for everything else. And I think for me, that's a good fit. That way I have a little bit more privacy with a Firefox browser. A little more control over what data I share than I do with the Google Chrome browser. And then, you know, YouTube works best in Chrome. That's just the way it is. So... That's what I use, um, and it works well. As you can see, I've got my blue iris up and running. It you can't see the blue iris, but you can see I do have it up and running in there. Um, and uh, I've got another. Uh, I've got my uh, Microsoft Outlook email in there, uh, Outlook Web Access. That's how I got around the issue of using Outlook. I just don't use it anymore. I use the web interface, and it's plenty fine for me. And I've got my terminal prompt. I've got my file manager here so if I need to go out and I need to say I need to connect to uh, I should have one for Unky Joe's Playhouse here I don't uh, say I need to connect to my music I have bookmarks set up so all that I have to do is click on the bookmark and then I'm taken directly to the file folder uh, with my data in it or to the mount it mounts it automatically um, then I'm using uh, P-R-I-T-U-N-L. This is my open VPN connection program. Uh, this is, I was unable to get the internal open VPN connection to work even with a configuration file. So I was in a crunch and everybody I talked to said, no, use this program to do your open VPN connection. Uh, and I did and it works great. And uh, so that's what I'm gonna stick with. I'm not gonna show you the details on that, but suffice it to say that it works. And then in, uh, I use Romina for my remote desktop. So if I were to click on that, you see I have a remote desktop session going uh, on a remote desktop session on a remote desktop session going uh, with a client computer right now that I'm having a little bit of trouble with. So uh, I'm still able to get in through my RDP connections. Suffice it to say, I've got all my co connections set up in Romina. Uh, and then the nice thing about uh, LibreOffice Writer and LibreOffice Calc is. I've been able to open all of my old Word documents and Excel spreadsheets, and I've been able to edit them, and I've had... Now, keep in mind, I do simple spreadsheets. I do simple word processing documents. I don't do anything really complicated, so it hasn't been difficult at all for me to to adjust. As you can see, the interface is plenty snappy. I can, I can move stuff around. Uh, I'm not getting screen tearing anymore. Uh, I came across an article uh, from a subscriber uh, and it's down in my notes on my first Linux Mint install and uh, to the one that uh, fixed the problem I was having 
uh, with the NVIDIA video card, and I am happy to say now that, as you can see, there is no more screen tearing, no more of that. What it would do is send a refresh line down the top of the monitor to the bottom. I'm not having that problem anymore. Uh, then I have, of course, Caden Live if I want to do my video editing, or once I learn to do my video editing. So you see I've got that. I haven't even got it configured, but it's there waiting to run. Then I use OBS Studio. I've got a system monitor up down here. I've got uh, Pativi. Uh, Pativi, what is Pativi? Let's go see. Oh, Pativi is another uh, is another video editing program, and uh, I haven't looked into it yet, but I'm going to start playing around with it and seeing if I like that better than Caden Live. Then I've got Zoiper on here for my voice over IP. Right now I've just got one one number in uh, in Zoiper I was using it to test, but it is working just fine. And then I've got my uh, my toolbar here or my uh, shortcut bar here set to minimize when I'm not using it. So as you can see, I have adapted to Linux pretty well. Um, like I said, other than that annoyance I had with uh, the sound uh, under Google Chrome, uh, and actually I thought I just had to exit out of Chrome. That was not the truth. That was not the case. I had to reboot the Linux uh, Mint machine, so uh, you know my I have had trouble with the sound card before in Windows 10 when Windows 10 first came out. So it's probably it was probably just a glitch in the matrix or whatever the hell they want to call it. Uh, but I rebooted in back into Linux Mint and it it was it worked just fine. Um, so again, the only thing that is keeping me switching completely from Windows, and that's a bit of a misnomer. I'm not really going to completely switch off of Windows 10 because I still have to use Windows 10 for my clients so uh, but my daily driver on my desktop is Linux and and the main reason for that is I want to be I don't want updates occurring during the middle of my work day I want to be able to control what I update when I update it I want to make sure an update's been tested and vetted and uh, I also want to control my privacy a little bit better and I, I think Windows is on a mission to take that away from us. I, I frankly see win, seeing Windows going to a service um, where either you pay a monthly fee for it or something like that. So if anything is going to kill Windows, my prediction is that will be the killer for Windows is when they start going to a subscription-based service. Because if you check around with friends and family members, most people have laptops, most people have their, their uh, phones that they use to get online these days. Most people have tablets. Um, there's not a lot of people buying PCs for their homes anymore. They're just because they've gotten so complicated to take care of. So, uh, and I'm even seeing clients warming up to the idea of Linux. You know, uh, these uh, license renewal fees are eating them up, eating them alive year after year, month after month. So, uh, again, I'll never be completely off of Windows, but uh, so far I'm liking Linux Mint. So I, I'd say with the exception of my uh, with a, uh, the exception of OBS Studio, uh, most of my work that I use during the day is up and running. And you can see I'm using roughly about the same amount of memory, maybe a little bit more under Linux than I was under Windows with the same type of uh, activities going on. And most of my stuff is browser-based uh, other than uh, OBS and uh, Remina or Reminer, whatever the hell you want to call it. So... Um, not a you know and you know frankly that's why we have a lot of ram there is so we can use it so it's not a big deal uh and as you can see the cpu load uh it's about 15 percent while i'm uh, recording this video with obs now one of the problems i'm having with linux mint and it's not the fault of mint uh it's the fault of the well it's the fault of cinnamon i guess i'm i'm not really understanding how their desktop tweaks and, and uh, widgets work for the desktop. In other words, how to customize the the uh, toolbar down below like I did on Microsoft, getting it to appear on two monitors, that kind of thing. So that's more of a, uh, you know, it's more of a layout issue than it is a bug or anything like that. It's just that I'm not familiar enough yet with the desktop uh, that that uh, Linux Mint uses to be able to configure it. Um, so I may be trying out uh, pl the Plasma, the uh, K-Ubuntu version of uh, Linux as well. Uh, but so far I'm very happy with Linux Mint. Uh, I've had no major issues. All the software that I, that I need or all the 
the software with the capabilities I need, they have Linux versions of them. So, and I showed off a few of those to you here just a minute ago. So, yeah, overall, I'm very impressed, uh, and I'll be staying on Linux uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said at the beginning of my other video, the only way I'm going to use Linux is if I immerse myself in it and force myself to use it on a daily basis. And so uh, it's a matter of learning a few tricks and shortcuts and that kind of thing. And, it, and I'm, of course, watching every Linux video I can get my hands on because I want to know how other people are doing it. So, uh, But overall, yeah, I'd give it a 9 out of 10 so far. So there you go, YouTube. We hope you found the video entertaining and informative as always. Please give us a thumbs up down below. Leave your comments down in the comment section, PayPal, and Patreon if you are inclined to donate. Don't forget to come back and see us again. And don't forget that we will see you on the other side, whatever that means.